Hi, my name is Massimo Banzi and I'm one of the co-founders of Arduino. Welcome to this series of video about the Arduino Starter Kit. In this particular video, we're going to start learning the basics of all the components we're going to use in the rest of the videos. So, what we see here is a set of electronic components and today we're going to build a very basic circuit. We're going to use a small LED connected to a, to a button and when you press the button, the LED comes on. It's a very simple electronic circuit that doesn't involve our Arduino board at all and it's designed for you to understand all the basic elements that make an electronic circuit. So, what is an LED? The LED is a small source of light. You can imagine it's like a light bulb, but it's more efficient because it doesn't generate that much heat because it's an electronic component based on a semiconductor. So LEDs are very convenient for us because they work at a small voltage. So they can be powered by a small battery or the voltage that you can get from an Arduino board. So what is a circuit? A circuit is a series of electronic components like this LED or this button connected together using wires. Electricity can flow through the components and each component is either able to transform the electricity into something else like light, like the LED does, or for example, the switch is a component that can open and close a circuit when you press on it. This particular button that, you, that I have in my hand, it keeps the circuit closed until I press the button and then it closes the circuit. Closing the circuit is like a little bit like when you open a tap. You let the electricity flow through the button. Electricity, you can imagine, is, is like water and the wires that we are using to make the connections are like pipes. So the source of electricity is essentially the equivalent of something that pushes water into the pipes. So the first circuit that we're going to build is going to have a source of electricity pushing the current through the wires, a number of wires that connect to the button, then the button will open and close the circuit and when the circuit is closed, the current will flow through the LED and then we will use another component that I have here called resistor. What happens is that the voltage of our battery is too high for the LED that we are using. Just to give you an idea, we're going to be using a source of electricity operating at 5 volts, which is the standard voltage at which the Arduino board operates. But this LED is only going to need about 1.7 volts. So how do we make sure that the LED doesn't take too much current? Well, we're going to use a resistor and this resistor is going to limit the amount of current that flows through the LED, keeping it at the optimum amount of voltage and current. How do we make the connection? Well, actually, what happens with circuits is that you can take wires and you can wrap them around and you can create circuits like that, but that's not very practical. If you want to do a lot of experimentation, if you want to move components around, if you want to try different kinds of circuits, wrapping wires around is not exactly the best idea. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this component that you see here. It's called a breadboard. The breadboard essentially provides a set of pre-arranged connections and each one of these holes is actually connected underneath with a metallic spring. So when I plug a wire into the breadboard, the spring will hold on to the wire and it will connect to all the other holes in the same line of holes. So let's have a look. For example, this line of holes that I am pointing to at the moment, they are all connected together. So if I plug this wire in this hole, all the holes in the same column are going to be connected to this wire. So if I take, for example, this resistor and I plug the resistor in one hole in the same line, for example, here, this is OK. So at the moment, the resistor and the wire are connected together. If I move this wire to the hole next to it, they are not connected anymore because only the wires in the same column are connected together. So to explain this concept a bit better, I have prepared here a circuit that contains a lot of all the basic elements that I told you about. This is the resistor, this is the push button, this is the LED, and this is a wire. So what's missing here is the source of power. What a circuit needs in order to operate is a source of electricity.
In this case, we're going to use the Arduino board as a source of electricity. The Arduino board can be powered through a battery or through a USB connection, as you can see in this particular situation. We're not going to use the intelligence provided by the Arduino board. We're just going to use the power uh, that, come, that you can take from the Arduino board in order to learn how to build the circuit on the breadboard. So we're going to connect this wire to the other leg of the resistor. You will notice that actually the holes on this side of the breadboard, they have a different pattern. So why is this? Because actually these two lines of holes, they follow a different connection pattern. So the ones that the cover the main area of the breadboard, as I said, are all connected along the column, while these lines are going all the way from one end to the other. So these are two separate strips of holes, and each one of them is connected together. So for example, if I plug this red wire at the beginning of this line of holes, I'm actually connecting five volts to every single hole that you can see on this line here. So this means that the resistor is now connected to this hole. Now I'm going to take this black wire and I'm going to plug it in one of these two holes that are marked G and D. G and D is the ground. It also represents the minus on your battery. If you look at the battery, normally there's a plus and a minus. So 5V represents the plus on this ideal battery. And the minus is here represented by G and D. So if I connect the black wire to the other line on the breadboard, now I have connected 5 volts to the first lines of holes and the black wire to the second line of holes. Now, if everything is done correctly, if I press the button, I'm going to connect the resistor to the LED. This will complete the circuit and the LED will light up. Wow, okay, it's working. Okay, that was good. So the ability to convert electricity into another physical phenomena that we can actually experience in the real world makes the LED a transducer. So the transducer is a component which is able to convert electricity into something else or for example uh, if there were a component that would convert light back into electricity that would also be a transducer. In particular we call the LED in this particular situation an actuator because it takes electricity and then turns into something that I can actually see in the real world. In this case I can see the light. Electricity is invisible to me, but the LED makes electricity visible by turning it into light. We have our completed circuit and I would like to make some modifications now to introduce some other concepts. So what we are looking at here is a very simple circuit where each component is connected to, to the next component in the circuit and then the last connection goes back to G and D. So you can imagine the current flows from the red wire into the circuit, through the resistor, through the push button, then in this wire, then through this LED, another wire back to ground. So this is how the circuit is closed. One of the features of this circuit is that the elements, we say, are connected in series because one component comes after the other. And we can make this circuit a little bit more complicated because at the moment we have only one button so what happens if I connect another button? So I can remove this jumper and then I'm going to add another push button making sure that it's connected with the LED. So now when I press these buttons, nothing happened because the circuit is still open. We have to close the circuit using one of these wires. So I will plug the wire here. I will plug the other wire here. And if everything works out, I press the button and still nothing happens. Why? Because these two buttons are connected in series. So they are one after the other. If I want to operate the circuit, I need to press both buttons at the same time. So look at this. When I press button number one and button number two, the current is able to flow through the circuit. And when I release one of the buttons, the circuit is open and it stops operating. So 
what we have learned now is that if we put buttons in series, so one after the other, I need to press all of them in order to close the circuit and make this electricity flow. Inside the push button, there are two pieces of metal that are separated by a spring. When you press the button, these two pieces of metal, they come in contact and they create an electrical connection and the electricity can flow through them. When you release the button, the spring pushes the two part pieces of metal away and it interrupts the circuit, it opens the circuit. So you will notice that the push button has got four legs. At the moment we used only two, what are the other two legs doing? Well, actually, they are internally connected to the first set of legs. So the two legs on this side of the push button are internally connected together, and the two legs on this side of the push button are internally connected together. So this increases the number of combinations that you can use when you create circuits. And so what happens is that if I take this uh, jumper, that I use to build this circuit, I can actually mount it behind the push buttons and the circuit still works. So what you will notice is that this point in the circuit and this point in the circuit are exactly the same. And here this point and this point are exactly the same. So when I press the button, these two points in the circuit are connected with these two points in the circuit. When I release the button, only these two points are connected and these two points are connected individually, but there's no connection between the four of them. So this allows me to try to create another connection that we call parallel connection. The idea is that we can actually place one button next to the other and we can create two different paths that the current can use to actually throw through. Let's see what happens if we put these two push buttons in parallel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use two jumpers. So I'm going to connect one leg of the first push button with the same leg on the second push button. And I'm going to do the same for the remaining contact, one and two. So what happens here is that if I press the button, now the LED comes on. And if I press the other button, the other LED comes on. And if I press both of them, the LED comes on at the same time. So what's happening here is that by creating two different paths for the current to flow through, I just need to press one of the two buttons for the current to reach the LED and light up. If you put the buttons in series, you need to press one button and the other button in order to create light. And in this particular configuration, you need to press one button or the other button in order to turn on the LED. So in a way, this small circuit is creating a very basic logic circuit. One that has an end logic, you need to press one button and the other in order to light up the LED. And the second one is an OR circuit. You press one button or the other. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And remember, build it, hack it, share it, because Arduino is you. Hi, my name is Massimo Banzi and I like to make stuff. So today we're here to look at another project from our Arduino starter kit. Today we're making the spaceship interface. This is a simple project designed to teach you about simple inputs and outputs uh, with Arduino. This circuit is going to show you how simple it is to connect a small button and a set of LEDs to the Arduino board and how you can control the LEDs through the button. First, I want to explain to you a few concepts about Arduino. First of all, Arduino, it's a small computer, the size of a credit card, as you can see here, that we can program using the Arduino development environment. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. So the idea is that we write instructions in the development environment, then we press a button that gets turned into an, a program that gets downloaded into the Arduino, and then the Arduino can interface with the outside world 
to implement any crazy project that you can come up with. So this project is very simple. We have a button connected to pin number two on the Arduino, and then we have three LEDs connected to pin five, four, and three of the Arduino. When I press the button, these two LEDs that are now blinking will stop blinking and the yellow LED will turn on. If I release the button, the two LEDs will keep blinking. So this is a very simple uh, circuit that allows us to control the behavior of these three LEDs from this button. Let's have a look at the code that we need to implement this behavior. At the beginning of the code, we have this line that says const int red LED 1 equal 5. So this creates a constant called red LED 1 that contains the value 5. This is actually a very clever technique that allows us to give a meaningful name to pin numbers. So throughout the code, I don't have to use numbers, but I can use red, red LED 1 to remember that that particular pin is associated with the first red LED. And if you look, there are another couple of lines where you would defini define a constant for red LED 2 and green LED. Then later on, we have another constant called switch pin equal to. This specifies that the switch or button that we're using is connected to pin number two. Then let's look at the setup. The setup is that part in your Arduino code that gets executed once when the board is powered on or reset, or this means also right after you upload some code into the, into the Arduino. And it, so as I said, this gets executed only once. So we see the instruction pin mode. Pin mode basically tells Arduino that we want to make sure that pins red LED 1, red LED 2, and green LED are all configured as outputs. Because the input and output pins of the Arduino can be configured to assume both configurations. Then we have an instruction called pin mode switch pin input, which is used to specify that the pin number, that pin number two is connected to a switch and then we want to make sure that that's an input so that we can read from it. Now, let's have a look at the loop section. The loop section of, in your code gets executed over and over as long as the board is powered on. So we create a variable called switch state and then we say switch state equal di digital read switch pin. So basically what this does, reads the state of the pin connected to the push button and returns a value high or low depending on the fact that the button is pressed high or released low. Then we're going to use a clever statement called if, which is very important whenever you write some code because this is the statement that allows you to make decisions. So in this particular case, we basically ask Arduino, if the switch state is equal, equal, low, do something. So in this case, we use the curly bracket to group lines of code together. So you can see that the if statement is followed by a question, a condition that needs to be verified, and then a curly bracket that specifies which lines of code need to be executed when the condition is true. In this case, switch state equal equal low basically says if the button is not pressed and then we follow that with a series of digital write statements that are used to turn on and off the LEDs and to implement this particular blinking behavior. After that, we have a delay of 250 milliseconds followed by a, a short blink cycle that happens on the other red LEDs. So the instructions that you see in this section of the if statement are used to implement this blinking behavior that you see here. Afterwards, there's a statement called else. Else is a statement that allows you to basically create a fork in the road in your Arduino code. With if, you can say, if something is true, execute this piece of code, and else says, if that condition is not true, then execute this other piece of code. So you can have two different parts of your code that get, that get executed depending on the condition, if that condition is true or false. In this case, when the button is pressed, then we use two digital write to turn off the red LEDs, and we use one digital write, green LED high, to turn on the green or yellow LED like we have here. So if I press the button, the LED turns on. If I release the button, the LEDs are blinking. So this is all the code 
that we need in order to implement this behavior. I want to remind you that the code that's inside the loop statement will be executed over and over. So, as you can see, the blinking pattern is executed, then Arduino reads the input, checks if it's true or false, and depending on that, decide which behavior to implement, and then loops back to the beginning. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and remember, build it, hack it, share it, because Arduino is you. Hi, and welcome to another video about our Arduino starter kit. This is called the Lovometer. This project is used to measure how hot you really are. Actually, in, in simple words, this circuit is a very simple thermometer that measures the, your body temperature and visualizes it on a string of LEDs. So, let's look at how the circuit is built. There are five LEDs on this circuit that are used as an output. So you can visualize the temperature <clears throat> by looking at the number of LEDs that are on at any given time. And so this is an extension to the previous project we looked at when we used three LEDs and now we learn how to use more LEDs, so we go up to five. But the more important part about this circuit is actually the sensing. In this particular circuit, we use a, a temperature sensor called TMP36. And um, the interesting feature about this uh, sensor is that it's a very precise uh, temperature sensor that generates a voltage which is proportional to the temperature that it measures. In particular, this sensor generates 10 millivolts of voltage for every uh, degree centigrade plus 0.5 volts. So for example, if the temperature in this room is 20 degrees, then 20 multiplied by 10 millivolts is 0.2 volts plus um, 0.5 volts, which is the uh, basic voltage that's always produced uh, at zero degree uh, by the sensor. So when the temperature in this room is 20 degrees, the sensor will produce 0.7 volts. Now we hit an interesting problem. In this particular case, we were using a pin that was able to measure if the signal was on or off. Was it basically able to measure if there was or there wasn't any voltage applied to the input pin. In this particular case, the sensor is producing a voltage which changes depending on the temperature. So if we want to actually be able to measure the temperature, we need to be able to measure the voltage produced by the sensor. So the digital pin, it doesn't work here because the digital pin basically says if the voltage is more than more or less three volts, then the input is high. And if the voltage is more or less zero, then the input is low. We need something that is going to able to give us a number which is proportional to the voltage that it's measuring. Here we introduce uh, the analog inputs on the Arduino board. You can see here that there are six inputs on our circuit called analog in, and each one of them is able to measure a voltage between zero and five volts, and it will return a number between zero and 1023 proportional to the voltage it's measuring. So when the voltage is zero, it's going to be the, the number returned by analog, the, the, by the analog inputs is going to be zero. And when the voltage is five, uh, the number is going to be 1023. And for example, for 2.5 volts, the number returned by the input is going to be roughly 512. So what we are doing here, we wired up the sensor in a way that we are providing power the connection to ground, so we're powering the sensor, and then the sensor has a third leg that we connect to analog input zero. So whenever the temperature changes, the voltage changes, the Arduino uses a new instruction that we are gonna see in the code later on called analog read, that will give us a number that we can use to calculate the actual temperature. 
Let's try the circuit for a second. I'm going to grab the temperature sensor and see what happens. So you can see now that the LED are turning on one after the other when I touch the sensor. And if I release the sensor now, the temperature is going to slowly go back down and you will see the LEDs start to turn off one after the other. So now that we see that the circuit is working, we should be looking at the code and understand how we have implemented this functionality. So let's have a look at the code for this example. So if we look at the code, you see some familiar um, elements like the setup function. So let's start at the beginning. We define a constant uh, called sensor pin that maps uh, the analog input zero, A0, in the code here, you can see A0. And this one allows us to uh, be able to change the input pin if we want to, and it gives a meaningful name to that particular input. So we know that the um, temperature sensor is connected there, so the code becomes more readable. Then in the setup function, the first thing that you see is that we are using serial.begin9600. Basically, this is a new function that we have introduced uh, in this example. It allows the Arduino board to communicate with your computer. So serial.begins opens a communication channel between your Arduino board and the computer. 9600 uh, specifies the speed, 9600 bits per second. So this allows us, for example, to print numbers that we can that we read from the analog inputs and send them to the computer where we can use the serial monitor that I'll show you in a few seconds to visualize the data that comes from the Arduino. Then we find a for loop. The for loop is useful in order to uh, execute a certain number of instructions for a very well defined number of times. In this particular case, what we are doing, we need to turn five pins on the Arduino to, to become outputs and we need to turn them off. So instead of writing the same two lines of code for five times, we use four. If we look at the code, we say that we see that four starts with x being uh, equal to two then every time that we execute pin mode and digital write, x increases by one, x plus plus is the instruction that increases the value of x by one, and we keep doing this until x is less than five. So when we hit pin number five, we stop doing this loop. So this is very useful if you have to apply the same operation to a number of pins. So let's delve now into the loop. Inside the loop, uh, we are reading the sensor value using analog read. So we have sensor val equal analog read sensor pin. This will measure the voltage and return an integer number which is proportional to the voltage that's been read. Serial.print prints the number towards the computer and serial.print ADC specifies that the number that we just sent to the computer is the raw value from the analog to digital converter. The analog to digital converter is the circuit inside the Arduino processor that turns voltage into numbers that we can use in our code. So the next operation turns the number read by the analog to digital converter into the actual voltage. So we specified that the numbers between 0 and 1023 represent the voltages between 0 and 5 volts. So what we are doing here, we are dividing sensor val by 1024, which is the maximum, the number of values that are, that are representable by analog read, and then we multiply that by 5. So this float type of variable is a new type of variable that we introduced with this example, that is able to store decimal numbers that in this case, uh, it's needed because we're going to get voltages like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, so we need to be able to represent these kind of numbers. Then we follow that with serial.print voltage and serial.print volts. This, again, sends to the computer the voltage computed by the Arduino and the string volts to specify that the previous number was 
the amount of voltage. Now here is where we actually make the calculation of the degrees. The sensor, as we said, is producing 10 millivolts per uh, degree centigrade and then adds 0.5 volts to all the values. So if we look at the code, we are taking the voltage, we subtract 0.5 volts and we multiply by 100. Using this formula, we convert the voltage measured by the Arduino into the actual temperature in degrees centigrade. Then we print the temperature and then we use a new function called printLN to write the string degrees centigrade. PrintLN, on top of sending the information back to the computer, sends this new line special character that tells the serial monitor on the Arduino to start printing the next line at the beginning of a new line. So this makes sure that all our values that we visualize are all nicely uh, aligned and, and readable. Finally, once we have the temperature, we need to be able to decide how many LEDs are turned on and off uh, depending on each temperature. So what are we going to do? Actually, we're going to use a series of ifs. In the previous example, we used if else to be able to decide if to execute one part of the code or another part of the code depending on the result of a question, of a kind of a condition that we ask Arduino to verify. In this particular case, we have to verify multiple questions because we have five LEDs, therefore we have multiple combinations. So we use a different kind of um, if combination called else if. So we ask Arduino, is the temperature less than the baseline temperature? If that's true, Arduino is going to turn off all the LEDs. If the temperature is in the first band, we have an if that's measuring if a temperature is more than a certain value but still less than another value. If the temperature is within that band, one LED will be turned on. And then we have another else if that basically goes through every combination of value until we are able to turn on all of the LEDs. So in this particular code that we are displaying here, we are using if else, else if, to divide the temperature range that we want to measure into bands and then we check to see in which band the temperature falls in and we decide which LEDs to turn on and which LEDs to turn off. Then through the last else if, um, we basically reach the end of the program then the loop is going to start again and we're going to go through the same sequence. Measure the temperature through analog read, take the number, turn it into a voltage, then from the voltage compute the temperature, print all of that information onto the screen and then afterwards decide which LED is to turn on depending on the temperature. So if now I grab the sensor, the temperature increases and the if statements are deciding which LEDs. For example, at the moment, this LED is flickering because the temperature is across two bands. So it's still undecided which one should, should be turned on. If I release this, uh, and maybe I blow a little on the cir circuit, you will see that this LED will start to flicker a little bit and then turn off. So we are now reached the end of this example. We have learned a little bit more. We have learned about controlling multiple LEDs. We learned about reading analog inputs, converting the values into voltages, converting the values into temperature, using multiple if statements to divide values into bands and make multiple decisions, and then how to print all this information back to the computer. I hope that you will enjoy playing with this uh, project and I'll see you in the next video. Hi, I am Massimo Banzi and I like to make things. And welcome to another Arduino tutorial video. Today we're going to be building a theremin. The theremin is a musical instrument 
that produces different sounds depending on the position of the hands of the player around the instrument. In this particular case, we're going to be building a very simple theremin using a light sensor as a way to capture the position of the hand of the player from the Arduino. You'll be using a photoresistor to detect the amount of light and from the amount of light we are going to guess the distance of the player's hand from the sensor. So here we have a piezo buzzer. The piezo buzzer produces sounds every time it's turned on and off. So and it, it, it's connected with the wire to pin number 8. While here we have a light sensor connected to analog input 0. So the light sensor detects the, the amount of light that hits the surface of the sensor. So by moving the hand from the sensor, we reduce or increase the amount of light that hits the sensor and in turn this information goes into the Arduino as a variation of voltage. In our code we're going to use the variation of voltage to gauge the distance of the player's hand from the sensor and we're going to map that to the appropriate values of sounds and then we're going to drive the uh, piezo capsule using the tone function in Arduino. Let's start building the circuit. The first thing to do is to connect the power bus with a red and black wire to the two uh, strips on the side of the breadboard. Then we connect the piezo buzzer. Since the piezo buzzer is a bit tricky to mount, we have to prepare the two wires at the right distance on the breadboard and then plug in the piezo in the correct lines on the breadboard. Now let's place the photoresistor. Here is the photoresistor. We place it on the breadboard. We connect a resistor between uh, this leg of the photoresistor and ground. Then we have another wire going from the 5 volt rail to the other side of the photoresistor. And then one wire connects the photoresistor and the resistor here to the analog input zero of the Arduino. So in this case we have set up a sensor that reads the amount of light and converts that into voltage that we can measure with Arduino and then we have connected an actuator, the piezo capsule, that produces sounds and now we're going to write a piece of software that ties them together. The software that we are going to be using with this project starts off with a five second calibration period. So during this time you will move your hand near the sensor like this to let the Arduino calibrate the values that represent the minimum and the maximum amount of light that can hit the sensor. After those five seconds Arduino will start the main loop and during the main loop, we have a very simple structure. We read the amount of light in terms of voltage applied to the analog in, and then we convert that to a suitable frequency to play on the piezo speaker. And then we use the tone function in order to play that sound. Let's look at the code. We start off at the beginning defining a few variables. The first one is called sensor value. It's an integer uh, variable that stores the values read from the light sensor. After that we define two variables called sensor low and sensor high and these are used in the calibration phase to determine which one was the minimum and the maximum value read from the sensor. So where's the trick? As you can see we are defining the variables sensor low starts off as 1023 and sensor high stuff.